Right, let me switch back. I'm also going to turn the camera off. And that thing, right, that one, now you can see everything. And what I will do is I will update the promo to be uh, shunting puzzles. Right, so first of all, this is root building, but this is not the root building tutorial, okay? The root building tutorial is still to come, but there will be some hints and tips here. Um, so, what are we going to do? So first of all, we're going to try laying some track. So when you go into lay track, you're going to click the track icon up in the top left corner here. And when you click onto this menu, you need to make sure you've got items on here. This is the track. Even though there's stuff here, this is the track you should actually be using, the one in the first icon. Because if you've got nothing in here, and some of the root um, things I've used in the past, there'd be nothing in here. So I've gone over here, and I've gone to... Uh, drop some track down. Now this one, let me try just using this one and we'll lay a bit of track and I'll show you what goes wrong. Um, so let's say I wanted track no ballast and I'm going to lay a nice piece of track. That looks very nice. And now I'm going to lay a point. So I come back here and as I lay a point I come and do a point. And that looks very nice. Now let's go back and see what happened. It's going to prove me wrong isn't it? It's actually worked. Okay, it's actually worked. That's not a very helpful game. <laughs> okay, never mind. So what happens is if you try and lay the track and the junctions don't render, it's because the track rule is not set correctly. Um, so you need to make sure you come down here, re-click that to make sure it's set, and then make sure whatever track you use is from the first icon, and then all will definitely be good. Right. So, let's go ahead and lay an ingle nook. So the first puzzle I'm going to do is ingle nook. So, uh, I don't take any credit for developing these shunting puzzles. Uh, if you Google ingle nook, you'll find that there is a, uh, a website, I think, wyman.info, w-y-m-a-n-n.info. He has an excellent site on shunting puzzles where he talks about how they're in the real world, these, where examples of these are in the real world. And... Um, the, some of the gameplay around them. Now, okay, so I've laid one track here. Now the next track I want to be parallel. So this is another little trick. If I now say make four tracks here, I can lay four at a time. If I press and hold and then drag left, it moves it across. If I now lay a little bit of straight, remember when it's yellow, it's snapped to straight. All right, and now what I'm going to do is come around this way, and I'm going to lay. Back. Make sure you always pick the same one, otherwise, again, you might have problems. I'm going to drop this back to one, uh, and then I'm going to lay another track going all the way back again. And that means I can now lay a track parallel to the original one without having to do anything funky or funkier than that. I can now just delete all of those, and I've got my two parallel tracks. So that's good. Now, we're going to clean up this in a minute. What I, would do, what I do with this particular yard is I lay it way too big and then we strip it back down to where we want it. So I'm also now going to lay a junction and that junction is going to come out. Unfortunately the default point radius is really long on this particular piece of track. That's not going to be any use to me at all. And that's really long. long. Never mind, we'll make do. Right. What you should do is use a track rule that's not quite as long as this. Um, and then with that curve there. Now go back and double check. Make sure the curve is laid correctly. Now one thing we don't have here is a... Uh, this isn't a manual point, which isn't great. So what I'm going to do is use the cut tool. And I'm going to cut that. So you see how it snaps on the junction? So cut it. All right. Now re-make the manual junction there and then re weld it All right, and you'll find that the junction has been reassembled only you now have a manual on there so if you need to change it you can do that I need to change it from mainline to yard do I? ah is that what it is? well let's do that then shall we so let's delete that Right, so if I delete that, you'll notice that that's broken. So I'm going to re-weld that to get that back where I want it. 
and then we'll come back to here, go back to yard, let's change it to yard, and let's see what my minimum radius is now. So I'll go back to that joint, I think, or near enough that joint. Oh, here we go. Yes, thank you, Jason. That was an excellent tip. So if you want to get access to the different one, let me just drop this point down. Oh, no, okay. Press the wrong button. Good. So if you want to change the uh, minimum radius, you need to look at this thing up here. You've got a number of different types, a so mainline yard, passenger and freight. So make sure you choose the right one and you'll get the right point that you want down here. That was a good save, Jason. Thank you. So now, having come out, we're now going to carry on up here. And I'm just going to zoom back so I can get this all the way back. We don't want it anywhere near this long, but that's just what it's going to have to be like for now. Notice how this looks a bit odd. So what we need to do here is, um, so I don't actually want that to be a crossover or a diamond or anything like that. That just happens to be how it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop a junction in. Oh, still set to uh, main line. Let's go back to yard. And uh, I'm going to come across here. Now, how do you join this up? Well, you press the control key. You'll notice it's now snapped. And when I click it, that's now given me a proper junction. And because the button was selected, it's manual. So I've got a bit of a mess here now. Because what I don't want is that bit. Okay, so then that actually looks a lot closer, except for this join problem, and there we go. So that basically is the track plan for Inglenook. As I said, there isn't much to it. So, what we do now is, uh, the way that Inglenook works is that it's down to having, uh, hey Joshua, ex-Northerner, um, welcome to the channel this evening. Uh, there are rules about how many wagons you can have in each siding. So what we do now is we jump into the scenario editor. And what we'll do is we'll actually place down the correct number of wagons. And then we can cut all the sidings back to the right size. Now, if you were doing this and you wanted to size it for a British route, then you would use British wagons. Because uh, obviously, you know, something like an auto rack car is quite a large wagon. If you, were also, if you wanted to size it up with auto racks and then use 16 using uh, standard vans, then uh, that would be a problem. Um, so let's go with the uh, the box car and an auto rack. So there's five different wagons that you can put. Put that one on there. And what else we're going to put down? The hopper. So we can put five different wagons down, and we'll put a tank down. So that's my five different wagons that we'll put on there. Now you may choose that you want to do all of the same so that it doesn't matter actually. In fact, that's an excellent idea. Let's do that. Because that way you know what you're doing. Uh, sorry, you're leaving room then for all possibilities. So let's just stick a bunch of auto racks because they're pretty much the longest wagons. Two, three, four, five. And then up here. One, two, three. And then up here. One, two, three. Before we finish... Over here, it is one, two, and a, uh, a switcher, which I'm just going to use an SW10. Drop that in there. Right, so that's all of the wagons. Now, that's the only length these sidings need to be. So if we now drop back into here. Right, now, coming down here. What you can do is we click here and cut. Now don't cut close to your wagon, otherwise you're going to have a problem. Uh, and then over here, we will cut. And then over here, cut. Good. Here, see those little sound effects I'm giving you there? That's all for free. Right, so that's those sidings sized up correctly. Now we just need to do this one over here. And that's that. Right, so that is Inglenook, as large as it needs to be for these wagons. So, what we need to do now... 
Just having a quick look at the chat. Am I missing anything else? There you go, easily confused. Thank you, John, putting the uh, the link up. So, go back to the uh, scenario editor, and what we're going to do is just uh, knock out all of this stock now, so because it's now in our way. Switch to consist mode so it's a bit quicker. Right, so that's that. Now let's get some siding markers in. Uh, first thing you need to do is make sure that they're enabled here. So you click the monitor icon, then look over here and make sure those six are enabled. So one of the comments that one of the things that I find and I've seen commented on by a lot of other people when that is when I come over here and I go ahead and nothing happens, and if I click Oh, hang on. There's something there. And when I click away, I can't get it back. Where's it gone? So people get very confused about that. And it's because over here, you probably clicked this button and switched everything off. Whereas if you now switch everything on, you'll see that you've got something here. And you can now select it and move it. So what we want to do is put that so that it's in the vicinity of the siding. Let's drop the other ones in and then we'll name everything up. So drag that one across. And that's it. That's another siding done. And then we'll do the uh the head shunt. Lead track, I think it's called. Can't remember. Right. So what we need to do now is double click on this and we can change it. So this is going to be called siding one three uh three car. And this is going to be called siding two three car. Just put it in both fields. And this is going to be called siding three five car. Cunning naming policy. And then over here, I'm just going to call it the head shunt because I can't remember what the American name is. Two, uh, two plus one, uh, probably, uh, loco plus two car. So that's the rules. Now, it's up to your players if they want to enforce those rules. But that basically is an Ingle Nook, uh, yard. Um, so what's the gameplay? So let's, uh, I just added those in root mode, in scenario mode, never mind. Um, so the gameplay is that we will add some wagons. So let's stick two box cars down, or let's stick a box car down and uh, an auto rack car. And we will stick a uh, loco. So even though the, the route can take lots and lots of rolling stock, normally you, the, 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 your ideal setup has got eight wagons spread around here, plus the loco. And then there is a goal to get those eight wagons in a particular order. So sorry, it's five of them in this track in a particular order. So here's 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 a question then. How would I swap these two wagons round? So if the goal might be to just make sure to swap these two wagons round. So you pull forward, get the yellow, come back, go forward, get the green, come back. So now I've got a loco and two. Go forward, drop the green off here, come back, go forward, drop the yellow off here. Puzzle complete. Um Hey there, Cophead, Odiosu, Cherry, Wambuco, Curly Fries Gaming, and Dabblegars, Lakutas, Bioxide. Welcome to the channel this evening. So, that's a simple example. Another example, now, well, let's actually, let's support that example a bit with, um, let's go back to the root editor, and what I'm going to do is lay another piece of track. So, what I'm going to do here is the same trick I did before. I'm going to lay a six track. Just a short bit, just to give it some space. And then I'm going to lay a one track back. And the goal here is, well, it would be nice if when you're playing the scenario, you had a visual aid for what you're expected to do. Uh, so let's lay that back to about there. 
and then we delete these but that one doesn't want to delete Never mind, I don't care. Right, now what I could do sometimes here is raise this one up just a little bit. This essentially is your, this is what I would like you to end up with when you're finished. Now it's obviously very fictional. Uh, and you may choose not to do this and just leave it for the um, the instructions of the scenario. Use the bin icon, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite stubborn. No, doesn't like that. But never mind. It doesn't matter. So um, we've got this bit up here, and what we can do is back in the scenario editor, we might say, for example, that what we want is. To end up with a box car at the back, and we want to end up with the auto rack, and then a double stack, and then a type of tanker. That's uh, one, two, three, four, and then we want to have uh, a coal gondola. Hey there, Gaza Pro and Cherry. Thank you for the follows. Much appreciated. So that's what we want to end up with. Is what we're telling people. Let's just add the load onto that so people can see the, the container. And then what we do is we sprinkle the wagons around uh, and create the challenge. So how you actually lay the wagons out is what creates the challenge. I think that's a coal gondola grey. And then we put a tank car green down by the looks of it. So you can see that you, you would place down a random sequence of eight wagons. Already got one of those, already got one of those. Need to put one of those down. No, I'm just doing it randomly, which means this is not going to necessarily create an easy puzzle. Uh, and let's put a three bay hopper down. What am I missing? Got that one, got that one, got that one. So we've got the five we need, and then we need to add two more. So let's add a two bay hopper to the back, and we'll add a caboose. Right, so I've now got eight wagons, and so my challenge, shunting, is to use these sidings to create that consist. You can only use the three. So, what might some of the moves look like here? Well, clearly we need to get the yellow wagon to the back here with that one. So those two are in the right order. That's a load of old rubbish, uh, but we don't need to worry about it right now. What we do need to do is get these out the way. So um, you would probably put those three somewhere else. Go and get those. I don't know how I would solve this off the top of my head. Um, Just having a look at the chat. Uh, Audiosu, DBoz, Spider Mike, CSX Boy, Odd Lan or Root Nav. Welcome to the channel again, uh, folks. Quamba Man. Yeah, just go and solve it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I set myself up a really nasty one there. So, what I generally do, if you raise the ground under it, then the chances are you're going to cause yourself other problems. Um, so, we, let's have a go and see what happens. So, let's change the, uh, so I save the scenario. And we will go to... Um, what will we go to? We will go to... Oh, it's been a while since I've used this tool. <laughs> Is it that one? I don't know what these settings are going to do. The wrong thing. Oh, not too bad. 
Right, so that's leveled off the terrain, the terrain next to it. And it hasn't really encroached on what's going on down here either, but it does look a little bit better than the track floating in nowhere, doesn't it? Okay, so if we now run it. Broken consist found. Don't give me that. Sometimes if you've modified the track where you've got wagons, you can have problems. So if you just wiggle things around, I believe that should solve it. No driver. Yeah, that won't help, will it? I never put drivers on, and when I do, I leave them as AI. That's better. So let's go back and uh, put a driver in there. See, this is why I'm leaving someone else to do the uh, the, route the, 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 the proper route building tutorial. <laughs> Okay, now we've got a driver in there. I'm not going to solve this. I'm just going to show you the mechanics, and then we'll get on to the uh, the uh, the Ingle. Uh, sorry, the time saver yard is the other one. So we don't really have to touch these yet, as I said. However, the next wagon that comes here is that container. So what we could do is put the blue. Go and get the blue wagon get the container, put the container on there and then put the blue wagon away. In fact, let's just go and put the blue wagon away. So over in here, we need to come this way and come in here. So this is like Railway Sudoku um, or your Railway Crossword Puzzle. So what I always um, envisage with with a route like this, we could ha you could have people submitting uh, intellectual, nice intellectual problems to solve, uh, and then having people challenging people to say, how many moves can you solve this in? What is your sh cheapest, quickest shunt? And it's not about time; it's about the number of moves. So the move I just made is one move to go and get that wagon. It will then be one move to pull it back and one move to drop it in here. So in total three moves to move this blue wagon so I'm going to grab the blue wagon and come back hey there Malcolm No, this old gamer welcome to the channel this evening When you're actually doing the moves, you don't have to go actually go all the way back, but you should consider that you have. And when you when you're bringing wagons out, then you should not just because it will fit. Go the wrong way. Go the other way. Um, just because it will fit potentially because of the way the track is geographically constructed, doesn't mean that um, you should do that. The rules state you can have five wagons, which is four wagons and a loco, three wagons or two wagons and a loco. Uh, and here you can have a loco, two wagons, and here three wagons or two wagons and a loco. Right, so if we go ahead and drop this in here. And then we uncouple that and then go back. distance that train looks like Mavis. Yeah, you know what? I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to solve this. I can't. Uh, this this needs more thought. I'm going to get this done very quickly. So um, 
I think I'm going to leave that there. That's basically the principle. You move wagons around and you see if you can reorder the five that are over here so that they're in the order that you want them to be. Um, this is a really easy puzzle, is it, Jason? <laughs> but you can only put three wagons in... Uh, in siding two though Jason you can even though there might be physically room for it the rules state you can only put three wagons in there and if you try and make more than that then yes you are but you're cheating um, and so one of the things is that because you can also only bring two wagons at a time out here essentially you need to build the other sidings up in reverse order so that you can bring them out two at a time to push them back and you can't clear the five because you haven't got room elsewhere to put them you've only got room to move three out of the way so that's where your challenge is going to be and it requires quite a lot of shuffling um, so what I would uh, <laughs> bending the rules yeah okay then dark <laughs> hey Matty Doyle and RCPD chief welcome to the channel this evening um, so th that's really the challenge of this one is I mean as, um, as Steve says there it's a sort of a, uh, a Tower of Hanoi um, type uh, type puzzle um, and uh, it, it can lead to hours and hours and hours of fun so this one's a, the reason it's called Ingle Nook is because when the author designed it it was designed to fit on a model railway board that could fit in something called the Ingle Nook um, I'm just reading the chat and I'm completely confused now um, so yes, it's, it's designed in a, to fit in a thing which is actually called the ingle nook, which is in British houses you've got the um, on the back um, uh, on the back wall you've got the uh, chimney in the middle, and either side of the chimney you've got uh, almost a U-shaped thing where a shelf might fit, and that's called the ingle nook. And this this layout is designed to fit in that ingle nook, and that's why I got the name. But you can find all that out on the Wyman.info page where he also credits the uh, the appropriate author for it. So yeah, as I said one more time, that's not my design of a puzzle. I certainly am not clever enough to come up with that. Right, let's do the time saver. So over here then, what we're going to do is lay a little bit more track. Um, so go into, remember go into that one go into yard, we'll change it over to yard over here now I'm going to start off by laying seven tracks and hoping I've remembered the right number and I'm going to lay them really long like I did before and then cut them back now this is based on, this is actually, Time Saver is an American prototype again I haven't designed it, someone else designed it uh, and you'll find the details on the Wyman page um, <laughs> Um, and this one is much more tricky, it's much more contrived, so Inglenook exists in a great deal of different um, Inglenook exists in a great deal of different uh, real world places, so the Seven Valley Railway at Bewdley there is essentially an Inglenook siding almost, um, just down the, uh, just slightly down the rail, the yard at Bewdley is actually an Ingle Nook siding, technically, so you can see real world examples of where these things are. Um, so what we're going to do here is I laid seven tracks and I'm going to get rid of every other track, just because uh, I'm like that. Now again what we're going to do is build this and then build the rest of it based on where the what the rolling stock will fit and again I'm going to do it based on uh, uh, on UK pro on the US um, wagons so what we need to do first is we need to build a a link line between these two tracks but we don't need seven link lines we probably only need one so in here I'm going to come out about halfway Now, if these tracks were right next to each other, you could just use a crossover tool, but I've left a gap just because it makes the shunting a little easier. And then press Control key to join them up. Right, so I've got the first link line over there. Now, the next one we need to put in, because these don't really record, depend on um, the... Uh, let me see where I'm going to... So these don't actually affect where wagons are necessarily. Oops, click the wrong button. Try that again. Put that one in there, and then put that one in there. So we're going to have to extend these sidings in a minute, but that's fine. So that's put those in. 
and now we need to do from here straight up to halfway up again again and then we're going to join it to there right so that's this side of the time saver done we're going to clean it up in a minute in fact let's clean this bit up now I don't want that line at all so let's weld that back together and I don't want the rest of this line and then let's weld that back together right so that's got this side looking about right so now what we need to do is put some wagons on here so that this bit is actually going to be laid out correctly so what we're going to do is go back to the uh, scenario mode I'll do them properly, John, uh, and, up, and yes, I will upload them to Workshop, but uh, these ones are a bit of a mess. Um, right, now, that's not that route. Where's my route? It's over here. Right, so, what we're going to do, so this siding here can only have one wagon on it, and I'm going to go for something, I'm just going to go for the boxcar. No, let's go for the auto rack. Right? So I'm going to put an auto rack. Now when you put the auto rack down, you need to make sure you can still get past it if there's an auto rack in there. So let's put it there. This siding can have no more than two, but bearing in mind you don't want to put it on the switch. So let's put the first one there, and the second one there. Now this is where the rules need to come into play a little bit, um, because physically setting out the track for certain things is actually going to make it so that you end up with where you can probably fit more than one wagon in a particular place where you're not allowed to really um, but like any form of cheating you're the only one that loses <laughs> two three now we need to extend that bit of track a little bit to get a third wagon on it and these need extending but we'll do that in a minute the key bit though is we need to put the other link line in so let's do that Right, so what I'm going to do is because this is where well, this is slightly more sensitive because we've got the other train on it, I'm going to put this as a yard. I'm going to start it here, and then we're going to come across. Actually, no, a bit further over. That's it. Hmm. Okay. Okay, in which case it looks like we're going to be okay to start over here. And tuck it in a bit. That'll do. So about halfway. And then come back, control key down so that it links to it. And that's laid the other one. So what we've got here that makes this one a bit slightly different to the uh, Ingle Nook, wherever that one's disappeared to, over here, is that we've got a runaround siding we can change where we are in relation to the wagons so what we don't want then is this bit and we need to re-weld it now that's basically the track layout right it's just sized incorrectly now um, and I need to get some wagons in there Right. Where is that root column? There it is. So over here, so again, laying track with trains on it is not a great idea. You get slight changes happening like that. So what we're going to do now is get another couple of auto racks here, and we're going to put two auto racks in there, and we're going to then go back to track laying mode. Uh, wait until you see solving the puzzle, Woody. <clears throat> right, so let's put uh, that down, make that yard. And what we need to do here is these lines all need extending, so don't just extend them way too much.
That's better. Right, except that didn't quite work. That didn't really actually render any track. Just delete that and do that one more time. Oh, the game hates me tonight. Let's delete that. And let's cut there, delete that, and then relay there. No. Okay. All right. Well, we could put this side, this uh, this junction back in. We don't have to do it this way. Oh, because we could come out here. Now, if we come out here, if you remember rightly, there was a gap. Uh, so this we need effectively a three track. So if we come here, switch to yard, and make a three track, and then press and so wait for there, press and hold, move to the left, a little bit of a track there, and then change it to a one, uh, and then back here. What we'll do is we'll draw a track straight back to the junction and then we'll rejoin the point up. Control to make it link up. That's it. Now it doesn't get to argue anymore. Not unless when I delete this it corrupts it all. Yay! Right, we'll join that. Good. So now we've got sidings which are definitely long enough, but now they're too long. But that's okay. That was the intention. Now I need to get wagons put on those so we can then work out where to clip them. Then we can have a play. That's a good tip, Fringe. So Fringe says, when no track is rendered, use some points to connect the disappearing track to a visible track, and then it will appear. And then you just undo it again. Right. Uh, oh, there it is over here. So let's put some more toe racks down. And then I will just explain the rules for this one again. So that's three. One, two, one, two. Let's go ahead and clip the track. Good. And that needs to be clipped about there. That needs to be clipped there. That one needs to be clipped about there. So let's just clean those up. Now I've used auto racks. You take, you may decide that all your wagons are going to be shorter than this, and therefore you can you can make the sidings all shorter uh, and the runaround loop shorter. That's absolutely fine. You make the route that fits the wagons that you want to use. There's no reason why this has to be an American prototype. It can be anything you like. So now I'm going to go and delete all the rolling stock. Yeah, 390 scenario is next. And then we'll get the namings, names of the sidings down. Yeah, where's I, I keep losing my route. Right, so let's switch to that and then we just delete these test placements I've put in and back to the uh, world editor. Where well, does the loco go? Anywhere you like. It's up to you when you define the puzzle to say where things will go. Now one of the things is this is meant to simulate industries so you can put little buildings of industries around in these different places. Um, so uh, let us go to here. We want marker siding. Let's put a marker there, and then put a marker there, and we'll put a marker there. There's another siding here, and another siding here. And there's another siding here. And one more siding here. Right. So this is going to be 
Siding one, two cars. Now, two cars means uh, one wagon, one loco, or two wagons. Siding two, two cars. And this means siding three, three cars. <clears throat> and what we got next is that one. Siding five is a two car. You're putting the names on like this, it means that when someone's looking at it later on, they can uh, see how many without you having to remind them what the rules are. And like I said, you can, when you're doing your own solutions, you, if you want to, you can change the rules. Um, but these are the rules for, in fact, the Wyman info details the exact rules. These are just from my memory, roughly, which I think they're about right. Um, and then this one, side in seven, which is two cars. Okay, now let us go back to here, drop some wagons down, and show an example. Indeed, Ed, you could you could um, put particular um, uh, say this is the colliery over here, and put colliery scenery around it. Um, oh, where is it? There it is. Um, so let's get a loco down, uh, and I'm going to put the loco here in the middle. Uh, and where you put it is entirely, like I said, it's down to the puzzle you want to create. So that it might be easy, make the puzzle easier there. It might be over here. Now I've got to drive the train down here to get somewhere. But I'm going to put it here, uh, and then I'm going to put two wagons down. So I'm going to put an auto rack in here. Uh, and I'm going to put a box car in here, and I'm going to put um, a three bay hopper in there. So the challenge, and again, you can use martial instructions to say where the actual scenario is, uh, where you want people to do it. But I'm using a free roam scenario, which is just going to make life. I mean, I can't put those instructions in. Um, Right, broken consist of got to wiggle everything. Hey Squid Gaming, Mr. Mania Man. Welcome to the channel this evening. Right, so so the challenge is to swap that wagon and the Roto Rack and put that in there. So if we go forwards. This is a fairly easy one because I've not really got any constraints here. It's just working out how you navigate around the wagon. So imagine there were two wagons in here and it was the one in the back that I needed to move. I'd have to get rid of this one, put it somewhere, and then I could access this one. And then if there's three wagons in here and all of a sudden I've got chaos going on. Right, bit of a clout, never mind. So if I drop that one in the runaround siding, And then uncouple. And then make 
make sure the point is set correctly, it isn't. So what do folks think of shunting puzzles then? Is it interesting? Not interesting? Had you heard of it before? Right, let's go forward. Yes, I mean it's mod as uh, Cincinnati Johnny said we do these in the Model Railway Club and indeed that's where the, this came from. This particular design um, was designed by a gentleman who was challenged to come up with um, a design for a Model Railway show um, on the on a shelf, on a basically on a shelf. Um, right, so we'll drop off the wagon, go back forwards again. So learning to use this runaround is key to time saver. There are some very, there is, I think, one of the things that people say about, uh, the critics say about time saver is, it's entirely contrived to be difficult, and it is, basically, it's entirely contrived to be a puzzle. Um, and that something this difficult would never exist in the prototype in the real world well if you've been around railways for more than five minutes you pretty much know that you can never say never um, because uh, for every if any time you say well that never happened someone will have a photograph somewhere of where it did and apparently um, there is uh, some very similar layouts in the real world in yards which do actually very closely or get scarily close to time saver so it's not entirely unrealistic but the goal here isn't necessarily to be a realistic railway the goal is to create an interesting and fun logic puzzle so we put this one back now remember the goal here was to get that green one and put it in the uh, siding over there and get the yellow one and put it in that siding and then we're going to get that one and put it over there Hey Pete, welcome this evening, we're looking at shunting puzzle routes Right, so now I didn't move far enough backwards. <laughs> Get off the point. Right, and now we need to go all the way forward again once we've dropped this wagon off. yellow one and push it forward. I'm just going to finish this puzzle and then we'll get on and we'll do the pendolino. Right, so we've coupled up to the uh, box car, so let's push that one forward. So I always think that when you're building a route, it's worth, if you've got the, uh, let the uh, opportunity, see if you can't build something like this into it, because uh, that gives a completely different element of gameplay. Um, that someone can uh, then can use with it. I know when I uh, I wrote all of the activities for the old Microsoft Train Simulator Seven Valley, and I think there's at least one Ingle Nook style puzzle in the uh, um, the yard at um, Butley, which I think went down quite well. I got some pretty good feedback on that one. 
Right, so, having dropped that wagon off, we've completed one goal that we wanted to do. Now we need to come and get the uh, hopper. Yes, Johnny, you're right. These are quite nice, very, very small layouts. So if you haven't got much room and you want a layout where you can move wagons around, then you can build this in a tiny, tiny area. Same with Inglenook, that's even smaller. Obviously, you want to make it bigger and add scenery, then uh, you certainly can. There's actually elements of Time Saver on Falmouth, in the docks. Certainly the runaround component is in there, and Pete used the uh, runaround component in the uh, scenarios for the 14XX. The uh, Cornish Conundrum. So let's go ahead and bring this wagon back. And then what we're going to use is the, the run round loop. So this is where you end up now with a problem. You remember I said that we had potentially a bit of an issue because I've already got a wagon here and I'm only allowed two wagons or one wagon and one loco and I've got a wagon there so I've, I've completely snookered using that to run around with the wagon because I need to get that wagon moved all the way out there so that I can bring it up to there so what I'm gonna do is leave the hopper there That sounds like a great idea, John. If it's an end gauge, you could do it in a heck of a lot smaller than a door, though. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get that wagon. And I'm going to put it somewhere out of my way, because it's in my way right now. simple fact unfortunately is it's just going to always be in my way so I'm going to put it over here No, I've just realised I did that wrong. It was the yellow one I wanted to bring into the uh, into here, not the other one round. Hey there, CLX RSII. Are you going to try pronouncing that? Welcome to the channel this evening. Uh, I need to pause, pause and think for a moment. Uh, I need to get that behind me, which means I need to go around there and I need to be in there. I need to come on forward here, put that in there, and then I can do that. Right, so let's get the auto rack back where it was. My goal was simply to go into that siding, not to pick the wagon up. Wally. plenty of steam in TS 2015 although it doesn't come with steam in the box by default the steam edition doesn't come with uh, with it in the box either steam edition means as in uh, steam the uh, software distribution mechanism rather than steam as in the uh, the power type right so we're going to go and get this yellow wagon
a Porsche S160. <laughs> Right, let's get that wagon brought back and we're going to bring it to here. Run a bit too fast, and we're going to smash into the hopper. So, we're not, uh, we're not allowed three wagons in here, so I can't stop. So what I'm going to have to do is put the hopper back over here where I'm allowed two wagons. We stopped, we stopped. So I want to take the one in front of me, not the two behind me. And I want to bring him and put it in here. This is just to get it out of the way. I'm going to put it back where it was in a minute. back and get the wagon we're actually interested in. Now we can do the manoeuvre we need to get that yellow one put in the right place. Uh, not if we bring that with us though, we've got a couple. <laughs> Yeah, and it gets much worse when you've got more wagons, Ed. Right, now let's go and get the hopper, run round it, and put it in that siding, out of my way. In fact, I don't need to run round it, I'm already run round it. That's good, I just have to go and get it. So get that, bring it up here, and then reverse it into up here, which is where we wanted it. Alright, let's put the handbrake on that one. Got the hopper, and we aren't going down that siding, we're going down that siding. Imagine adding driving a steam engine to this, having to deal with all of that as well. Well, with a layout this side edge, you probably this size edge, you probably could do it because the physics are pretty much going to uh, stay working. It should be sound. There's not a lot of it, but there is sound. Right, let's put that up into there.
So one of my goals with this um, little tutorial, as well as the shunting puzzles, was just to give a very quick starter on some tips on getting some track laid down. So if you've never done it before, hopefully uh, that's given you a bit of confidence to go and have a play. Laying track is actually very easy. Uh, the little tip of pressing the control key to get junctions to join is actually a, a massive time saver. Right, let's go now and do our last couple of manoeuvres. Oh, I've got volume, I'm sending stuff, and it all, all says it's sending stuff as well. And I've got no dropped frames, which is all very cool. Now we're past there. We need to come back. We just got to put that wagon back in there, and we're done. So two more moves. Hey, Spider Mike and Dougie. We're about to get onto the Pendolino in a minute. Last couple of moves going on now. Well, control basically does snap to track. It just means you don't have to switch to snap to track all the time and then switch back to to get you the um, snap to straight availability. Because when you're in snap to track, you can't do a um, um, uh, you can't do a snap straight. So you have to keep switching back and forth. Whereas the control key is just a shortcut that enables it for that moment. Cheers, Scatterbrains. Enjoy your movie. Well, livery is friendly and I've been to city. <laughs> That's all I've got, I'm afraid. Okay, we've got the wagon, let's go back. So, the key thing is anytime you stop, then you can make sure you must make sure you haven't broken any of the rules in terms of have you got too many cars anywhere uh, because it's those rules that actually make create the challenge if you could just put as many wagons as you like anywhere then uh, it's uh, it's not really a challenge <laughs> it's based in reality because in reality the yardmaster doesn't want you blocking up points and uh, doing other all sorts of other unfriendly things So that probably wasn't the most efficient way of solving that particular puzzle, but as you can see, with just three wagons, and there are versions, there are time saver puzzles which have got a lot more than three wagons on them, um, and uh, it's quite interesting to move around and move the wagons and understand how you can get the other side of wagons, take two wagons from here and put them up there, that's not a five minute job. Um, so uh, you have to really think strategically and almost like chess you've got to think several moves ahead because you might end up snookering yourself like I did there so that has been a very brief overview of shunting puzzles I say very brief it's probably been a lot more than very brief but never mind um, so that's the time saver puzzle um, and over here is the Inglenook puzzle um, on the Wyman website, wyman.info, um, you can find more about the uh, origins of these particular ones. But what I really will do is I will go and find the original author so I can properly credit them. Um, and at some point, I will try and get um, a uh, couple of these routes up onto um, Steam Workshop so that we can look at them. So Ingle Nook is the brainchild of Alan Wright who passed away in 2005 and Time Saver is um, originally from John Whitby Allen who passed away in 73. Uh, you can find out all about the origins of them on the uh, Wyman site 
um, which uh, John has posted up again. UKTS easily confused. Thank you. So uh, yeah, enjoy. Um, I mean, I'd love to see if you do anything yourself. Then uh, I would love to see more about it. Send me screenshots um, and let's have some puzzles. I mean, if you're interested in it, you should create some puzzles, upload them to Workshop as scenarios, and then we'll uh, we can try and challenge each other. So I'm going to exit at that point. Um, so yes, that. Oops, wrong one. That's better. So that.